Once upon a time, in a village on the other side of the lake, there lived a young man called Scunny Wundy. Now, Scunny Wundy was not so big, and he wasn't so small, and he wasn't so fast, and he wasn't so strong, and in nearly every way, Scunny Wundy was pretty unremarkable. But despite all this, wherever he went, Scunny Wundy would walk with his chest out and his nose high up in the air, thinking he was so very much better than everybody else. And all day long he would strut back and forth with his chest out and his nose up in the air, bragging of his imaginary accomplishments and all of the things he would accomplish in the future. In his own eyes, Scunny Wundy was the best at everything that could be done. Now everybody in his village, they got pretty sick of Scunny Wundy walking around thinking he was better than them. They got sick of looking up his nose every time he wanted to talk to them. But nobody ever dared call him out on his nonsense. Because there was one thing that Scunny Wundy was good at, and that was tricking people into embarrassing themselves. Now in those days there were a great many terrible monsters. There were people who could change themselves into bears. There were flying heads that could destroy entire villages. There were great horned serpents in the lakes. But among the most feared of these were the stonecoats. Once upon a time these had been the worst of criminals, cursed for their misdeeds changed into giants with great slabs of rock for skin. Each one of these were stronger than twenty men, and no weapon could pierce their hide. And more than anything else, the stonecoats loved to consume human flesh, particularly the flesh of small children and babies. Now one day a runner came from the neighboring villages, with news that a stonecoat was on the way, fast approaching. Now the village gathered together into the council house to debate what should be done. And after very little debate, it was decided that the village should be abandoned, for their odds of defeating a stone coat were slim, and even if they succeeded, the cost would be great. Now when Scunny Wundy heard this, he walked right into the center of the council hall, and he stuck out his chest, and he put his nose up in the air, and he said, Ha! What a bunch of old women you are! Why, if I had a force, I could defeat a hundred stone coats. And yet a single giant has these old women fleeing into the bushes like frightened rabbits. Aye! I'm not afraid of any giant. And the chief got down from his seat, and he walked up, and he smiled, and he said, So you go fight him, then. And Scunny Wundy went white as snow, and he realized he'd put his foot in his mouth. But despite his knees shaking, he kept his chest out, and he kept his nose up in the air, and he said in a slightly trembling voice, Good! I've been looking for an excuse to get a little bit of exercise, but, uh, how will I find the giant? The forests are vast, and no doubt the giant will have heard of my bravery and will run when he sees me coming. Yeah. So the chief says, okay then, we'll send out some messengers. We'll issue a challenge to that stone coat and we'll have him meet you at the old ford. We'll tell him of the brave and fearsome Scunny Wendy. For everybody knows no stone coat can refuse a challenge, and that the only thing they love almost as much as eating babies is a good fight. Now, Scunny Wundy was in a barely concealed state of panic at this point. He realized he'd just dug himself deeper, because he knew that he couldn't refuse or he would never hear the end of it. And for the rest of his life he would be nothing more than a laughing stock. And he took up his bow and he took up his axe, and Noah was up in the air. He set out into the woods in search of the stone coat. And the further away he got from the village, the slower he started to walk, because he was genuinely frightened now. He needed to buy himself as much time to think as possible. If I threw rocks at him, he'd just catch them and chew them up like strawberries. If I shot arrows, they'd just shatter off his skin like twigs. And so he went, shuffling along the trail, staring at his moccasins, until suddenly he heard a noise. He heard a noise like the beating of a gigantic drum or the roar of a hurricane. And he crept closer to the river, and he peered around a great big oak tree, and he saw on the other bank what he had been dreading. It was the biggest, ugliest, meanest, strongest, most terrifying stone coat anyone had ever imagined. And it had ripped up a pine tree by the roots, and it was beating it against the ground like a drum. And it was singing a war song in a voice like thunder. Then the giant stopped his chanting and shouted at the top of his lungs, Where is the coward Scunny Wendy who dares challenge me? 
And Scunny Wendy nearly passes out from fright. He goes to tiptoe away, but he steps on a twig. The giant looks his way all of a sudden and shouts out at the top of its lungs. Who is over there? Are you the fool who says he can destroy me? And Scunny Wendy sighed. And he looks down at his little axe, sharp enough to shave the hairs on his arm, but so small and inadequate by comparison. He says, okay, now or never. And he jumps out from behind the tree with his nose up in the air and his shoulders back. And he shouts, yes, I am Scunny Wendy the Great, and it is true that I can destroy you. Now, come over here so we can start our fight. And the giant roars and charges towards him straight into the river. Now the river here was very deep, and because of their great weight, the stone coats are unable to swim. So he walked in and the water got deeper and deeper until it was over his head. And Scunny Wendy thought of a little trick. He saw the ford up ahead that the giant had neglected, and he ran up and across to where the giant had stood before. And a few seconds later the giant emerged and looked around in confusion. Scunny Wendy called to it from across the river. Hey! I thought you were coming over here to fight me. You must have got turned around in the current under there. Or maybe you're scared. And the giant screamed in fury and swung its tree trunk over his head like a war club and charged back into the river. And Scunny Wendy ran to try and get back to the ford, but he tripped up and dropped his axe. No time to go back for it. He crossed the river to where the giant had stood a few seconds ago. And the giant emerges dripping from the river. He looks around in confusion again, and he sees the axe on the ground. He goes and he picks it up, and it's so small he has to hold it between his two fingers. Huh! <laughs> what is this puny thing? Some child has lost his toy! And Scunny Wendy gets an idea. He had heard that any weapon that drew the blood of a stone coat would be gifted special powers. So he calls out, Hey! How'd you get my axe? Yes, it may be small, and it may be the least of my many weapons, but it is more than strong enough to be your doom. And the giant laughs and laughs. And Scunny Wendy says, fine, you don't believe me? Just feel the edge, see how sharp that is. And the giant touches the edge with his finger, looks up slightly confused. He could feel nothing through his stone skin. Scunny Wendy shouts back, That's not how you test the sharpness. Everybody knows that if you want to see how sharp something is, you touch it to your tongue. So the giant sticks out his pink, fleshy tongue and licks the edge of the axe, and oh, that bloody well hurt. And the giant looks down at the blood running down the axe blade, impressed. He'd never felt pain before. He takes that axe and he swings it against his tree trunk club, and the axe goes clean through, as though the tree trunk were made of water. And he takes up that axe and he swings it down against a boulder, and the boulder shatters into a thousand pieces. And the stone coat gets scared. Because if the axe can shatter a big, great big boulder, just think what it could do to me. And if this is the least of his weapons, then... Oh, I might be in over my head here. Scunny Wendy shouts out, Look, keep the axe. I want a fair fight anyway, just get over here so we can start fighting. I don't have all day. The giant falls to his knees. Look, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I challenged you. I don't, I don't wanna... I'll be good. Just let me go. I'll never bother you or your people ever again. Now Scunny Wendy paces back and forth, and he does this for a long time, pretending to consider. And he says... All right, I'll let you live on two conditions. One, you never come back here, and none of your kind ever come back here. And two, you tell everyone you meet that you were defeated by Scunny Wendy the Bold. The stone coat doesn't need to be told twice. He nods in agreement and scampers off into the bushes as fast as his great stone legs will carry him. Scunny Wendy grins to himself, picks up his new magic axe, and sets off home with his chest out and his nose high up in the air.